So let's first look at the Gradebook Lab together. And there's a couple of unusual things about it. So let's go over to the Google Classroom. <clears throat> and we're going to click on the data structures and go to the classwork. And here is the Gradebook Lab. And you can see that there are two things here. There's a directions file, and then there's a folder. So if you go over to the folder, you'll see that the Gradebook Lab is in here. Here it is, Gradebook Interfaces. So what you want to do is take this and download it onto your computer. So to do that, you right mouse click and hit the download button. And it'll take a few minutes because Google's drives have slowed down, I guess, universally because it's free. And free is always slow. But if you set this to download, it will eventually download on your machine. And then we'll look at it together. OK, there it goes. I got stuck there. I almost got done. Yeah. Can you speak up, Miss? Uh, it allows some things and not others, and I've never really understood the rules for why. I would be surprised if it lets you load GitHub, but uh, we'll see. Okay, so here I have uh, downloaded the gradebook, and if I look at it in the folder, you can see that it's got a zipper on it. You cannot run code with a zipper on it because it's compressed. So you want to double click on it and it will become uncompressed. And then what you want to do is you want to drag that file either to your desktop or even better to your numbered drive so that you can run it from there. So I'll just run it on my desktop here like this. You're probably going to want to import the files eventually into IntelliJ. Uh, I'll just show it to you on BlueJ for now. And if you open up this folder, this is that directions file that's also linked in your uh, Google Classroom. But you notice that there are two parts. And I need to explain to you why that is. But if you look inside the parts, let's look inside part two here, for example, you'll see that there's level A, B, and C. And this was originally built for CSA. And some of the students in CSA would be struggling by the time they got to this uh lab and so level a was built for students that have an a in the course level b was built for the students that have a b in the course and level c was built for all the students that have c's d's and f's and so what's happening here is that a gives you the least amount of code b gives more of the code to you and c gives you large amounts of code but here we are in data structures right so we're at the top of the heap so we're only going to use level a it, please don't look in levels B and C. They'll give you too many hints here. Likewise, if you go to part one, you'll see there's A and B. We're only going to use level A for this class. Now, next question is, what's part one and part two? I need to explain to you in the next 10 minutes the two ways that teachers calculate grades. Mr. Sarkar uses something called a categorical grade book. And there are other teachers that use a total points system. And I need to just briefly describe those to you because in the first part here, you're going to build a total points grade book. And in the second part here, you're going to build a categorical grade book. To be clear, what you're building here is a super simplified version of PowerSchool, okay, where you have a bunch of assignments. You take the assignments and the grades, and you calculate the final grade for the student based on the assignment grades. That's what you're building in this lab. So here's how you do it. So let's go over here and show you the two possibilities. So let's say, for example, I'll, I'll show you the easier one first. Let's say you're building a total points grade book. So this is a total points grade book. And you'll do this in part one of your lab. So let's say that these are your test grades, 90, 100, 45, 67, and 90. Then let's say these are your quiz grades, seven out of 10, uh, five out of 10, nine out of 10, nine out of 10, and 10 out of, uh, 10, out of 10. And then let's say that these are your homework grades, uh, 
nine out of 10, uh, 10 out of 10, and 10 out of 10, and 10 out of 10. These are your homework grades, okay? And let's say that you wanted to calculate the average. It's very simple. You just add up all the points. Okay, you just add up all the points, and then you figure out what the total could be. So first here, you add up 90, 100, 45, 67, 90, 7, 5, 9, 9, 10, 9, 10, 10, and 10. You add all that up, you get a sum. And then to figure out the denominator, you figure out what the max is for each of these. So the max would be 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. These all have a max 10, so 510, 520, 530, 540, 550, 560, 570, 580, 590. So you take this sum, divide by 590, you get an average. You see what's going on here, right? Very simple. You just add up all the grades, divide by the maximum, you get your, your grade. So that is how a total points grade book works. Another way to do grades is you can do categorical grade book. And when you do a categorical grade book, the teacher tells you ahead of time that tests will count for 40% of your grade and quizzes will count for 20% of your grade and homework will count for the remainder. What is that? 40% of your grade. Now, when it's like this, what you want to do is you, you take all the tests, you average them together, get a test average. Then you get you take your quizzes, you average them together, get a quiz average. Then you take your homework, you average them together, get a homework average. And then you weight them. You multiply this by four, this by two, and this by four. Uh, add everything together and divide by 10. And then that's how you can get a categorical average. There are advantages to having this way and this way. The big advantage to the categorical grade book is that if you want your tests and quizzes and other things to count for each percentage, you can get it exactly those percentages. The big disadvantage to a categorical grade book is that if a student, for example, has done really well on tests and really poorly on quizzes, right? And all that's left is another test grade. There's no way they can improve their grade. You see the problem? Because they're they're getting tested in the wrong category. So those are the trade-offs as a teacher. I still find this better. I have to tell you, there are times in my life I wish I had been a total points grade book kind of person instead. It doesn't matter though, for your lab, you're gonna build one of each. You can see that in terms of building the infrastructure, it's much easier to build this than this. To build this, you have to do all kinds of keeping track of categories, which assignments are in which categories and calculating sub-averages and then the final average. So in your lab, you're going to have this thing called gradebook. And gradebook is an interface. Okay. Now you're going to build two different other gradebooks. You're going to build a total points gradebook, and you're going to build a Categorical grade book. What is the relationship between these two classes and this interface? Who can tell me? Mr. Uh, Heitzakevich, sir, can you tell me, sir, wh what do I write here for these classes relative to this interface? Extends, sir, would be, listen, extends would be if this was a class and this is a class, but this is an interface. So what do I have here? What relationship? Implements. Very good, sir. So I'm going to have an implements relationship here. Okay, so these classes will implement this interface. This interface is given to you in the lab. It's given to you. Now, separately, in part one, you're going to have this class called assignment. And in part two, you're going to have another class called category assignment. What is going to be the relationship here? Who can tell me? 
Okay, Mr. Frannemick, what is it? Okay, this is an inheritance relationship. So this one is going to be extends. These two are going to be implements. There's only one difference between category assignment and assignment. What do you think that is? Mr. Basu, sir, how is a category assignment different from an assignment? So I'll give you a hint. The category assignment has one additional variable you need to track. Any idea what that variable is? The category. What would be the data type on that variable, sir? It would be a string. So a category assignment is just like a regular assignment, but it also has a category field. I know I've talked for an hour and it's more than enough. Let's get all act together and go next door and press some buttons.